What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. So, i got my beloved Red Hilux here. This is my very first TF2. Pieced it together off of eBay because I couldn't afford to buy a kit at the time. It's had a lot of changes over the years, a lot of nice upgrades. It is fully linked, 3 link front, 4 link rear, and it failed me miserably at USTE. And some of that had to do with the drive. Um, just rattled things loose. We'll cover some of that in this, but we're going to do some major upgrades to it. This is my favorite crawler. It's the most scale truck I've got. I bobbed the bed myself. It's got pretty full interior door panels and all. Um, I love it. The bumper is one of those old RC four-wheel drive ones you can't get anymore. It's been cut and modified and recessed. and It's got a handmade roll bar, handmade rear bumper. It's all brazed and stuff. My first experience ever doing that kind of stuff and I tried a lot of weathering things on it um, got some pictures of this this body when I first did it it was glossy maroon and it was pretty and oh, it's been a lot of things it was on the original RC4 drive Yoda chassis which was their Bruiser Ruptor Bruiser styled thing before the trail finder was ever around and uh, yeah it's come a long way so it performed great out there until it didn't. So the first big issue that I came across was my drive shafts. These are the rebuildable Punisher shafts from RC four wheel drives, RC four wheel drive, sorry. And the uh, drive out there, I lost all my hardware. And so I've got a couple of the rebuild kits for that. I only need it for the front, but we're gonna go through and I've got a new tube of Loctite I just opened. We're gonna Loctite the snot out of all that again. Um, had some issues with that in the past, so I thought I'd Loctited them all very well. I like those shafts, they look good, they're heavy, they're solid, and I thought I'd Loctited them enough, but I didn't. So we're gonna rebuild the drive shaft. Um, another big issue I had, my front shock. So this has the Proline, oh, what do they call them, Power Strokes. And they've been fantastic on here. I put them on here when I ran the Forerunner body on this chassis, and it just, that body was still so heavy, the link suspension, it just didn't jive right. But back with the Hilux body, works flawlessly, and I've got them set up and tuned how I like them. But the drive out there again, my front shocks, the bottom of the housing came unscrewed, and they dumped all their fluid out. And I don't know when that happened. Um, some of the, I watched some of the video that I filmed at USTE driving this truck. And it looked good. It looked like it was working. I don't know if they were loose then or had fallen off yet or that was on the way back home when they came apart. But they've dumped all their fluid out. The rears are still good. It was just the fronts that came apart. So we're going to take those apart. And I may hopefully have enough shock fluid. Still got an old SEX 10 one I think that's 10 weight shock fluid. We're going to put that in. And <laughs> yeah, fix that. Um, so then next step, we're going to upgrade from the 1060 Hobby Wing Quick Run to the 1080. Talked about that a little bit in the video. It's got a programming card. We can up the voltage for the BEC to run the new Reefs Triple Four. The first real nice servo I've had in a very long time. The only servo I've ever had on that level was a Protec that I had in the Blazer. And uh, that was a very expensive servo. Reef stuff's pretty expensive too, but this thing is beautiful. And uh, everybody tells me that I'm going to love this. So the servo in this truck is not bad. This is a Savox something or another. It's a black housing. Let's see, it's a SC025. I have the dirt off. 1MG. So it's a 251 milligram, whatever that is. You do the math. It's... <laughs> Not a bad servo, it's not noisy. We're gonna move this servo over to the Forerunner, which has a more expensive sad box that whines and groans and makes noises like you would not believe. Well, you would, because you've seen it in the videos, but this servo has been good, but this is my favorite truck. This is my go-to crawler of all time. This is, you know, if I find somewhere new to crawl, this is the truck I wanna take so I can benchmark off of this. <clears throat> so, we're going to put the nice triple four in there. I've got an aluminum servo horn for that. Um, this is just one of the cheapies that comes with those little cheap Amazon servos that are in my Amazon Influencer store. It does fit the spline on the reef servo. 
which is good to know because I don't want to have to buy a Reef's aluminum horn because I'm cheap. So we're going to do that 1080. We're going to program it up the BEC voltage to, I think it goes to 7.8 or 8.4 or something around 7 or 8. And uh, try to get as much out of that as we can. It's going to be an improvement over the 1060. We already have my favorite motor in here, the Torque Expert Pro. I can't remember. Holmes Hobbies, 35 turn. Those motors are fantastic. I have one in the uh, C2X, which is flawless in there. So I'm hoping with a little more voltage and a little more, little better electronics, we get the most out of that motor we can. Um, so that's it for the upgrades. We're going to get started on that. I've got these nice boom racing wheels. I've got the tool to take the caps off and we'll do that. Really not much left else on this truck to upgrade. And we've got a Yoda 2 front, a Yoda 1 rear. Like I said, it's three link, four link. It's heavy. It's got a good interior. Um, full bed floor, spare tire in the bed, roll bars. I'm missing the snorkel cap. Lost that a couple years ago. But other than that, it's pretty well complete. We've got metal sliders. My favorite, the RC four wheel drive. This is a straight bar, nothing fancy. Fortunately, I don't think they make those anymore. But um, yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna start with the uh, drive shafts. Get that rebuilt and lock tight everything. <laughs>
All right, guys. I'm going to get all sentimental here for a bit. This truck is freaking awesome. I love it. Um, I know I've talked about it in videos before, and probably at the beginning of this video, I started filming a couple days ago. <laughs> um, yeah, this this thing is from a time when I was just getting started. Uh, this used to have the T-Rex 60 plastic axles, which were giant. Um, I did a video, there's a comparison between, I think, the D110 Jalan, Galan 2 and a the, four, the FJ Cruiser. And uh, this, and it still, I didn't even have shocks on at the time. I couldn't afford to put shocks on it. Uh, but I pieced this together. This kit, I never bought this as a kit or an RTR. This one, I bought the frame rails. And then two weeks later when I got paid, I bought this. And then I bought that. And this body was on another truck that I had. And cut it down. It's, it's just been through so much. And uh, this is a very well-deserved upgrade for it. This thing is a tank. I love it. This is the the uh i don't know what it's the face of the three mile gourds this is the truck that's built for that terrain it just crawls through there like it's nothing so uh yeah big thanks to uh they're not really sponsors but guys that wanted to get involved with the channel Bauhaus rc and helios the batteries they've been working with me for over a year now um i've got a whole slew of new helios batteries and uh reefs reefs rc got that triple four on there that thing is like butter it's nice um i for the first time i've ever used a programming card on that 1080 that i bought um really awesome nice to up the voltage on the bec to 8.4 i think 7.4 is the max on that one um, that servo could take 11 but <laughs> that that esc that's that's a good budget esc i got that from uh i think rc addict out at ust it was like 48 bucks a lot cheaper than it is a lot of places but uh i just love this thing man it's it's fantastic the length uh, back in the day i didn't know what i was doing with leaf springs like a lot of folks that get a trail fighter 2 and they immediately they drive it and it doesn't perform like an sex 10. so the first thing i did i bought the three link four link set for it <clears throat> and this truck was more scale had a trailer hitch and everything on it and it's been through so many things but this is the right purpose for the link setup on the Trailfinder 2. It's it's a it's definitely a rock truck, definitely a crawler. Um, anybody out there that's got a TF2, give it a chance. Break into leaf springs. That's that's the key. Just working them in. Uh, my my old blue one that I bought that I put the Forerunner body on now. That chassis had been through like three or four owners at least, and uh, man, it it just crawls amazing. It's got four leaves on the back to hold that heavy body, and it just flex. It, it almost would flex as much as this if I had different shocks set up on it. So don't don't give up on the leaf springs. Just enjoy the scale stuff, and then your leaf springs will be broken in after you've driven it enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this thing is just awesome. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions online about this bumper. This is an old old RC four wheel drive Trailfinder two bumper. I don't know what it was called um it used to have ends that came back a little further i've cut them down when i put it on the forerunner body and now it's back on here the mount it has is aluminum and it's supposed to be about eight millimeter away from the body and i've filed it down and modified it to get it tucked back as close as possible and it uses the stock tf2 bumper lights and lenses and housings and everything i don't have the winch hooked up never have um i would like to but I don't, I don't know. We're not there yet. It'll be something fun else to play with. Now we've got enough voltage and ESC to power. Um, again, I had to rebuild the front shocks. They had vibrated up completely apart. The bottom cap had come off of the body, and it dumped all of its fluid inside of my rooftop cargo box on the way back home from USTE. Um, those Proline, those are the power strokes, I believe. They're expensive, but they're they're pretty nice. They. Before that, I was running the stock SEX-10 kit shocks from the first SEX-10. I love those on just about everything. Real good shock, real cheap. You get a set of four of them for like 20 bucks. They're a little bit harder to find now because there's two and three new model SEX-10s, but all the axial shocks have always worked good. Um, they've leaked the least out of everything. All RC shocks leak, apparently. Um, other than these... 1990s Tamiya plastic touring car shocks that I've got that never leak. Um, all RC crawler shocks have ever, I've, all every one of them has leaked on me at some point. So these haven't leaked that bad. Um, the backs, I've topped them off there at the end of the video. 
they were eh, about a quarter inch low so they are leaking there was some stuff on the axle you can see it um, the boom racing wheels I love these they're fantastic they come with this nice tool easy to remove get to the wheel nut um, they've been great they look great 155s uh, remember a while back these are the RC four-wheel drive 155 Mickey Thompson Baja Claw MTZs I think the big boys they're how big are they yeah, somebody's gonna ask about four and five eighths what it looks like and uh yeah those things are like paper thin i'm always worried i'm gonna rip one especially the heavier this truck gets but they've been good we put the uh what foams was it put some better foams in it at some point i don't remember what brand it was I'm trying to find the sticker on my toolbox over here and i don't remember <laughs> i think it was crawler concepts or something crazy crawler i don't remember it was a dual stage foam it looked way too big to fit in there they've been fantastic you can see i can't leave it setting because they do flat spot real bad those tires just have no sidewall at all but man they sure do drive good they crawl crawl fantastic so i'm, I'm excited also in this video we put the uh, new spectrum three channel receiver in it so i can run it on the dx5r pro i don't even know what i've got I got rid of that rugged didn't like that non-working touch pad went back to the old clicky wheel um, I like that controller. It feels good. It feels more solid. My DX3 that I've used forever, DX3S, has been fantastic, but it's time to retire. It only holds 10 rigs, and it's programming. This, I think, holds 200, so I'm slowly getting everything over to this. Um, it's, you know, the receiver's a three-channel receiver. Bought two of them today at my local hobby town. Where's the other one at? They were $47.99. So, it is what it is. I couldn't get this radio to bind with the older Spectrum receivers. It worked with a couple of them, but it won't work with all of them for some reason. So, it is what it is. So much for brand loyalty, but we've already, that's my third radio I've had. I sent two of them back or sold them. So, we're going to stick with it and, uh, yeah, make do with what we got. But I appreciate you guys watching. Um, Y'all make all this happen for me. It was awesome again out in florida get to meet so many people they watch the channel and yeah it really revived my enthusiasm i've been getting kind of burnt out you know still working the day job and 40 hours a week and coming home and at least 20 to 30 hours a week of rc stuff and videos and editing and editing and editing and social media and all that stuff it really wears you down but I appreciate everybody that's really been into the land and the Three Mile Gorge and the kind of behind the scenes and the camping side of the channel. Because that really helps me relax and get away. And I can go up there and just chill, be quiet and peace and nature and crawl my trucks and have some fun and bring you guys along. So everybody that really appreciates those videos, much love, man. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, that reef servo. Oh, man. Oh, it was asleep. So smooth. And I, it's kind of cool all the things you can change on here with the drag brake and everything. I've, I've played with that a little bit, made some changes. I've got the drag brake where I like it. I need to slow down the reverse a little bit because it is a little little touchy. But uh, it's neat being able to modify that kind of stuff. I've never really gotten that far into the electronics. I'm all about the chassis and suspension and fabrication and stuff. And electronics is just like, okay, whatever. Here's $20 ESC. We'll throw it in. Get some power to the ground full throttle go so learned a little bit more still you know been in this hobby since i was oh a long time ago and uh, <laughs> it's almost my birthday I'm getting old but um yeah still learning stuff every day so appreciate everybody keep a scale see y'all in the next video